healthy life is a good balance between fun and work. Keep yourself fit, keep yourself involved in the society, don't abuse any substances. Keep a healthy relationship with your friends and family. Always just stay positive, you know, you got to keep that positive mental attitude every day. If you believe in yourself and you're doing the best you can to be the best person you are and avoid bad influences and just as long as you're happy, I think you're living a good life and you're being healthy and safe about it. I can't tell you that. I'm not too healthy. <laughs> I, I, I take vitamins, I guess. Maybe that's the healthiest thing. You got to keep good values. Um, you know, remember where you came from and try to try to make sure at all times you make sure that is, you ask yourself the question, is this, is, this going, is this going to help you down the future? Is this going to help you down the line? Is this going to be the best, best thing for your, for your life? You should definitely stay away from drugs and alcohol, but being in high school, that's hard to do and stay away from, especially with the influence that we were talking about before. But I think you do know like what the difference is between right and wrong, and you'll know that what's healthy for your body and what's not. Good exercise, uh, good dieting, you know. Don't eat so you can explode. And uh, basically, you know, just always keep, keep fit. You know, do extracurricular type activities, you know, that keep you in shape somewhat. Having a good job, um, being with people you love. You have to be happy. Just you have to be as happy as you can be. It's a hard thing to be, but if you can, if you can be happy, you're, you have a healthy life. Keep a good balance with your friends and family. Um, you know, family is important. Try to keep you know some type of connection with, with God too. Your religious beliefs kind of play a part, I guess. You have to be active and be active in your church. Have the right friends and do the right things. Dylan, what are you doing? Sorry, I didn't get a chance to eat breakfast this morning. Well, that doesn't really look like a good choice for breakfast. Oh, I think it is. Well, do you know how much like sugar and fat is in that donut? No. Well, neither do I, but like everybody knows donuts are not really good for you. I mean, carrots are so much better. You should have one. All right, I will. Good. Okay, or two, or five. Dude, we have a show to do. Sorry, just trying to get some nutrition. Eating healthy is just one aspect of living a good and healthy life. That's right. You have to take care of all the aspects of yourself. Your mind, your body, and your soul. We don't just have to feed our body with healthy food, but we have to feed our mind with knowledge, understanding, and compassion. And feed our soul with goodness and love for God and His creation. Being healthy and living right. That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Kristen. And I'm Dylan. And this, this is, is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. The teens on the street gave us their thoughts on what it means to live a healthy life. It included everything from exercising to staying away from drugs. To eating healthy and being active in your church. We'll hear from them again a little later in the show, as well as meet our studio guests. But first, let's meet our spotlight guest, Catherine, a former Real Faith TV host who will share with us what she does to keep herself healthy. What's portrayed as perfect in America is um, like a stick thin, perfect body who's endowed in all the right places but tiny in all the other places. There needs to be an emphasis, especially on teenage girls, about how to discern what is the healthy medium, where is the right middle ground to be. It should be a balance of healthy eating, you know, more vegetables than meat. I don't do fast food or anything, anything that I know is bad for me. Like I've never been a smoker and I'm happiest when I feel physically fit. So I've made exercise and going to the gym a major part of my life just because it helps me feel like my body runs better. And when I feel healthier, I just am a happier person. I just like to incorporate, you know, like working out, eating right, spending time with friends, but nothing in excess. I really think that life is about moderation and self-control. The odds are against us, you know. We have problems with pollution. We love eating too much. So I think if, if you know that you're making steps to change the way you live and to produce a healthy body, then of course you're going to find some sort of calm in yourself, in your mind. Yeah, um, like she said, you know, moderation, everything's really important. And, you know, there's a lot of images about people being too thin and, you know, it's kind of hard to find where your body would fit in and all that. In the book, The Theology of the Body, Pope John Paul II writes about how the body needs to be respected and treated with love and care. That's so true. I think sometimes, though, in our world, it's easy to fall off the right track. There are so many temptations out there to make unhealthy choices that don't respect your body. Like, for instance, this donut. 
Well, just go ahead and eat the donut already. It's not gonna kill you. Actually, I'm full on carrots now, thanks. Good for you, Dylan. You made a good choice. Let's meet our studio guests now and find out if they're always making healthy choices. All right, they are John, Leah, Ijama, Andrew, Dan, and Lauren. So how would you guys define a healthy life? And would you say that you guys follow your own guidelines? Um, in my opinion, a healthy life is one where there's a balance between mind and body. Mind is kind of like, you know, praying to God, uh, keeping faithful, and body is uh, eating a lot of nutritious foods and stuff, uh, working out, that type of thing. I know for me, I try to keep that balance, but I find that sometimes I either put too much emphasis on the spiritual or too much on the physical, and I can't really find that balance. I'm still working on it. I agree with John. I think most people just like focus on one thing and they don't focus on the other. Like I have trouble focusing on the physical, but I feel that I'm pretty good on like the mental and spiritual side. Yeah, me too. I'm pretty good on the mental and spiritual, but the physical, sometimes, you know, it's kind of hard to balance that out. I really believe that they sort of like tie in in a way, because if you respect yourself, you know, that's through spiritually, emotionally, and physically, so it all sort of works out together. And if you respect yourself and believe that God's always going to be there for you, I believe that's the key to a healthy lifestyle, but I actually have a hard time following that myself, so. Yeah, and also if you have like a lot of good friends, they can like help you along the way. Because if you have friends that aren't really living a healthy lifestyle themselves, it's sometimes hard to live on yourself. I guess most of us would say we try to live a healthy life, but it isn't always easy. Sometimes the pressures in our daily lives can lead us to make unhealthy decisions. For instance, it's sometimes easier to grab that donut out of the box when you're racing out the door than to go wash a few carrots and put them in a little baggie. Like most things in life, it's all about making the right choices. Next, let's go back to the teens on the street and find out what choices they have to make every day. And what they do to maintain a healthy lifestyle. You have to make choices of, you know, who you're hanging out with. I mean, if you want to take a sip of, you know, alcohol, if you want to do drugs. And do I cut this guy off? Do I, you know, give him the finger or not? You know, do I get mad about it? Do I, do I tell somebody off if I'm mad? Do I, you know, do I eat this? You know, is it healthy for me? Is it not? There's a lot of influences out there and, you know, it's just important to kind of think about yourself in the long run and just kind of ignore it. And that's a good way to be healthy. I could go hang out with the wrong people and make the wrong decisions, but I choose to stay with the right people and make the right choices. I work out regularly, I have tons of fun, I get my school work done, I'm still in school. I've never uh, once smoked a cigarette, I've never once drank a beer, uh, I've never done any type of drug. No matter how hard you try, I don't think everyone maintains a 100% healthy lifestyle, but I try my best. I would like to say that, you know, everybody messes up here and then, and I know I definitely have, but, um, I look at every day as a new day, and every day is a, a chance to improve, you know, my last day and be a better person. I'm friends with the right people, and I don't feel like I have to be anyone but myself. Uh, I stay active, I play sports for my high school. Gym, making sure that I'm always thinking positive about other people, not judging people before I see them or talk to them. I guess with like the foods I eat, trying to stay away from the fat foods and stuff, but you know, I, I still do it. Well, I definitely, I keep active, I run, I help my mom around the house, uh, I pray. Uh, I think that those are certain things you need to know and do with life to keep a healthy lifestyle. I think a healthy lifestyle is like the most important thing. And it's not always easy because when I was younger I used to be a pretty hefty kid. But uh, as I got taller I just kind of thinned out and then I realized, you know, like this is how I want my body to be. So I started eating healthy. But really there's no better feeling than going to bed at night knowing that you had a balanced day. Like you ate healthy, you did some exercise, you had some fun with your friends, you also hung out with your family and you know you didn't leave any and you prayed and just made sure you fit God into your day. And like that's really the most rewarding feeling and that's when you're going to have the happiest life I think. And I guess going along with that, just being able to bring God into every aspect of your life just giving it that central focus that everything else you can sort of, God can be the center and then balance everything else around that, whether it be spiritual, physical, or mental. Yeah, well, me and Kristen, we're on the same field hockey team, and I feel like if you have like an activity, like a sport that you care about, you're going to make sure that your body is ready to play that sport. And my coach always says, like, don't eat bad, don't drink soda if you're going to play this sport because it's demanding. And because I love this sport, I love field hockey, like, I'm not going to jeopardize my body. I'm not going to make myself weaker or anything. Yeah, I play lacrosse, so 
it helps me stay in shape, and that's like mainly what my exercise is. So it's it's really helpful. It's and beneficial. It is because I played sports all three seasons of my whole four years in high school, and then when I went off to college, I didn't play any sports, and it felt so like something was missing in part of my life because I was used to the whole routine of go to school, do the sports, I'm in shape and everything. But then after that, I was just like, I needed that the aspect of my life. I do fencing um, uh, every week and I know like it definitely helps me feel so much better because like you exercise and your body just feels so much better and more relieved and you like you can sleep better at night. It's important to keep all three parts of the self healthy and in harmony with each other. We need to feed them all because they all help support our well-being. When one of these parts is weak there's an imbalance and sometimes even consequences. Next, the teens on the street share the consequences we may face if we don't always follow a healthy lifestyle. Let's check it out. Uh, I just, I, I see friends of mine all the time, you know, get involved and get caught up in drugs or alcohol and it, it just overwhelms them and, you know, they fall back in life, they fall back, you know, in work and, and it, it's just, it's just rough to get back on your feet, you know, get back in that, in that balanced lifestyle. It's, a friend of mine, he did um, drugs and such, and he's ruined his life. Now he can't get a job. He, he's been, he has a uh, criminal record, stuff like that for doing drugs, alcohol. Somebody I knew did a lot of stealing, um, and the consequences were he got kicked out of his school. He had to learn his lesson. I would say drinking and drugs, people, people ruin their careers in sports, definitely. If you get into drugs and alcohol, you really do ruin what you have, and I've seen people not be able to go to college because of like what they've done in drugs. I know kids who have gotten in big problems for drinking and smoking and things such as that. That's not healthy. A long time ago actually I was just involved with the bad crowd like I said and they brought me down with them. I got arrested but ever since then I've learned a lesson and I've changed all my ways and I feel like I'm such a better person today for it. Girls I always feel are negative towards each other even like before they even see each other. So I just make sure that I don't doubt anyone before I know them, maybe like give a negative reaction towards them. So being non-judgmental, definitely. My friend, he was on a diet, he lost a lot of, he lost like 40 pounds, and then he started eating fast food again. He gained all that pounds back. My sister, she's really, really busy, and you know, she's in college, so she has a lot of exams and papers to do. And so sometimes she doesn't really plan her time well. So last year she ended up getting mono, which really took a toll on her health and you know, because she hadn't getting enough sleep and she's still recovering from it even though it happened a year ago. So it's been really tough. I remember my senior year in high school, like I took really hard classes. Me and my friend, we took like all AP honor classes and it took a lot of time from us. So we, didn't, we got like three hours sleep like every night and then we didn't eat right and it was like messed us up the whole year. I know a lot of kids in high school, like to prepare for finals and stuff, they'll buy a prescription drug off kids who have ADD to try and like help them study more. And people in my family have ADD and even taking this medication, like they lose a lot of weight, like they throw up a lot. And so they're prescribed that. Like I can't even imagine like what happened to people's bodies if they weren't prescribed it. Like what Leah said, I know like kids at my school, they take um, drugs, like they smoke pot and stuff so they can relax for the finals because it's so difficult. And they like, they just threw their lives away and none of them did very well in their finals at all. I know going off of that, there's a girl out at my school who um, became very emotionally attached to one of her guy friends. And to the point where when they stopped seeing each other, she just shut down, crying every day, not eating right. And it just literally took everything that she'd built up to balance it became so focused on one aspect that everything else just fell apart and that's like the one thing you got to try to avoid. I've been drinking Pepsi and I've been drinking it like a few cans a day so I think I'm like addicted to it. I'm addicted to the caffeine kind of and I realize it's unhealthy and I don't know what I'm going to do but I like to drink Pepsi a lot. Uh, for me, I have a family friend. Uh, he actually was a really, really, really good lacrosse player, an exceptional player and he, it was his senior year in high school and he got, he got into like drinking a little bit and uh, he ended up still going to a good college but he probably could have gotten to a better college if he hadn't have chosen that path. Yeah, it can be tough. I know my last season in football last year, in the very last game, I actually hurt my knee. I tore my ACL, which was pretty terrible because I couldn't do anything. Like you, I couldn't run, I had to get surgery and then I couldn't run. Like for two weeks I was just in my house and like it's tough for a kid who played sports his whole life 
and uh, like just to be sit there. And it can even be depressing because at times I felt like, you know, like why am I like if I can't go out and do stuff, like why am I even here anymore? Like this is just bad. But once I my knee recovered and it's getting better every day and it just makes it easier to the better I get, the more healthy I want to live. And it, I just think it's really important to have good health in your mind and your body because if I wasn't mentally strong, I don't know if I ever would have recovered from an injury like that. There are people who we all look up to to help us make right choices in our lives. For many of us, our parents are our first teachers in the area of healthy eating, socializing and practicing our faith. But throughout our lives, there are many different people who inspire us. For Catherine, it was a neighbor who taught her about eating right. Let's hear her story now. There was a woman that I really admired that I was good friends with. I used to babysit for our kids. She's just so full of life and she taught me everything I know about nutrition. I would see you know her making like a protein shake in the morning to have for breakfast and then you know she's making like an egg white omelet with all these crazy cheeses and really exciting stuff like that. She talked to me all about like monounsaturated fatty acids and how good they are for you and omega-3s and how important these things are to put into your body to make you function properly. Like having different kinds of lettuce in your salad can give you different kinds of vitamins that you need and understanding what's protein. You know, why am I tired at four in the afternoon or like I'm cranky and I can't focus? Oh, it's probably because I didn't have enough protein today. Interesting. If people stop worrying about like restricting their calories or not eating certain things because they have fat in them, olive oil, which has a very high fat content, is actually extremely good for you. It helps your hair look shinier, your nails grow, your skin stay moist and not dry. It doesn't matter that there's fat in it, it's because it's a healthy fat that you need. Your heart needs healthy fats and things like that. The less, the less ingredients in a substance, the better it is for you. There's these protein energy meal bars that only have four or five ingredients in them, and it's like dates, almonds, unsweetened cherries, they're amazing, they're so good. Simple things like that and not grabbing the energy bar that's full of high fructose corn syrup and things like that. I really have made efforts to get rid of just bad foods. And I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm like a chocoholic. I loved baking and everything, but I've just kind of integrated a healthier mentality, knowing about food, really understanding what I need, what I don't need, and how to accommodate what I, what I just wanna have. Yeah, um, my role model when it comes to living a healthy life is my aunt, who is also my confirmation sponsor, so it works out like that. Uh, she's a psychologist, and she has all these little um, like wheels about balance and how important it is you know, to have your spiritual and your mental and your physical and just everything you know, together. And so she's always telling us like, different things she learns and you know, giving us all these pieces of information, so it's really cool. I think my mom has to be like my role model because she's an RN, and she knows everything they needs to know about like eating right and all that, and she, like, you know, make sure our family's eating right all the time. My role model probably is actually my grandparents. They both, like, are 80 years old, and in fact, in, like, a couple days, we're going whitewater rafting together. So they're really in shape, and also, like, their minds, they're so smart. They always do the crossword puzzle with me, and they play Scrabble with me, and also they always go to church. Like, my grandma is, like, teaching a Bible class. Like, all around, they're just really great people, and I look up to them a lot. I have some important teachers, and I know I have at least one that helps with my spiritual, my mental, and my emotional, and physical, so I grow in each way with each of their help. I think my role model this year was definitely my like, health slash gym teacher because he taught us all about what good foods are and like, what we should eat, and then in gym class he taught us how to be physically strong and all things like that. Uh, my role model is definitely my mom. Uh, she does serve us like vegetables and fruits and stuff. It always had to balance uh, nutrition. I think my friends are some of my closest role models when it comes to eating right and being spiritually sound, just because they're always saying, oh, well, you know, you could do this or this is better for you. And they're always looking out for my safety and my welfare. I think for me, I use my whole family as role models because uh, my family's really diverse. And it's easy just when I look around to just like my brother and my mom, my stepdad and my dad, and just pluck things from each one of them of their character that I like. Like my uncle, like he eats really good. Ever since I was little, he'd be like, oh, I'll give you a dollar, eat this lettuce, like trying to get me to eat healthy. <laughs> and uh, like, that, like 
from him, I take like my physical health because like he used to be like a stunt man. He's like great shape, and that's what I want to be when I get older. But then also like my mom, like she really helps me not be stressed, and like she's like she does like yoga, and she's like oh yeah, deep breaths and everything. And then for like everybody else, like I look around and I see like things that I know I don't want to be like. For example, uh, there's a guy in my family who just snacks 24/7, like three or four desserts, and I just say to myself, I know that's an example that I don't want to follow. According to FamilyDoctor.org, your body responds to the way you think, feel, and act. This is often called the mind-body connection. When you're stressed, anxious, or upset, your body tries to tell you that something isn't right. For example, high blood pressure or a stomach ulcer might develop after a particularly stressful event, such as the death of a loved one. Understanding this connection between the mind, the body, and the soul can help us all support these three aspects of ourself and become healthier and happier. Next, Catherine tells us why recognizing this connection is important to living a healthy life. There's absolutely a connection with a healthy body and a healthy mind. Um, St. Ignatius has a quote on the walls of my, the gym at my school and it says that part of living a life that thanks God is taking care of your mind, your body, and your soul, your spirit. Our bodies really are given to us by God for us as custodians really to take care of them. Because if you know and really, really understand what it means to know that you are a temple of God, then you will live nothing but a healthy life. It says, I'm grateful, I recognize everything you've given me, Lord, and I will take care of it. Just live in a healthy, happy medium where you put God first and you understand the value of friendships and relationships and your family. Because I think if you recognize that you have a problem or a habit that isn't necessarily helping you and you want to find God and help correct this, that means you already want to live a healthy life. So if you have any desire to explore this kind of thing but you think it might be too late or you're in too deep, no, not at all. The fact that you recognize, you know, maybe I'm doing unhealthy things to myself or I might be in an unhealthy environment, there is always, 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 always time to go back to God. And, God is present in our lives everywhere, in so many ways, in the most unsuspected places. Just take the time to, prayer, to, to, to pray and reflect on your life and just invite God to come to you. Many of the teens on the street also agree with Catherine that spirituality plays a big part in their healthiness. Let's hear what they had to say about this. Spirituality plays a part in the pursuit of healthiness because being one with God and one with your one with your faith, it can also make you happy and make you a good person. Without without God, yeah, it's, it's, life's life's kind of hard. Seriously, for me, I can't just sit and wait around for God to help me through all my problems. I know that I have to play a part in it, and I know that as long as I'm doing what I got to do and being healthy, how I'm supposed to be, that God will take care of the rest. If I look at my faith, it helps me make the right decisions. Which, makes, which helps me keep healthy. Making sure you always, I guess, believe in God and knowing the right path and where you're going in life. My community and church brings like my family together and like my friends. A lot of it deals with you know, your, your religious belief. And without, without a connection with you know, your higher God, um, you can't really have a balance you know, otherwise. Yeah, like putting God first in my life is something really important to me. Um, because I really strongly agree with the passage in scripture that says I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. So before doing anything in any area of my life, I always just like sit down and pray. Like for example, during finals, um, I had a lot of stuff to study and I brought it in the car and I, you know, cause my sister and my mom were going to mass. And I was like, no, I'm coming with you guys. I just have to go to mass. You know, if I'm going to take a break during my study, that's where I want to go. So I brought my papers in the car and just made sure that I spent time with God, even though I did have studying to do and just balanced it out. Going off of that, um, for me, going to the gym is one of those things that after a long day at work, it's like, oh, I just don't want to go to the gym. I'm just too tired. But I'm always like, God, give me the strength to go so that I can really build up my physical body to respect it and to keep it as a temple that you entrusted to me, as Catherine was saying before. Um, as a young kid, um, the commandment that should not kill, it was explained to me that it doesn't only mean like killing as a murder. It also means like that should not harm yourself, anything that can harm your body, like through spiritual, mentally, even physical. And anything that falls along those lines is going against the commandment. My philosophy in life is to keep everything in moderation and do everything in moderation. 
and I have to keep praying for that, which I always do, because I have to remember to, you know, focus on certain areas, but equally, just to keep everything in order and simple so I can have more focus on the important things. Mm -hmm. Moderation is really important. Um, like I was saying, when I got my knee injury, I think part of it might have been a little wake-up call from the Holy Spirit saying, you know, you're spending too much time focusing on sports. And uh, the time I had, because I didn't play anything in the spring season because I was recovering, actually gave me time to get into other things that really benefited me, like this show. And uh, some other stuff that really just improved my life and made me a more well-rounded and balanced person. It's nearly impossible to live a totally and completely balanced life because life is so unpredictable. You never know what will happen next or what is right around the corner. Just take simple steps each day toward a healthier lifestyle, one day at a time. Don't jump into a big workout plan if you're not an athlete. Just think about moving more and keeping active. And keep a healthy diet of prayer and time with God. With God as the driving force behind you, you can't help but move in the right direction. Do you lead a healthy diet of fruits, vegetables, and prayers? We'd like to know. Contact us at our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com Or you can call us at 609-406-7402 And one last thought. In the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger. And whoever believes in me shall never thirst. So remember to nourish your spiritual life. And make the right choices that lead to a life that is healthy and happy. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time on Real, Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. God bless. I guess most of us would say we try to live a healthy life, but it isn't always easy. Sometimes the pressure in our daily lives can lead us to make unhealthy choices for ourselves. For instance, it's easier sometimes to grab that donut out of the box when you're racing out the door than to go wash a few carrots and put them in a little baggie. Like most things in life, it's all about making the right choices. Next. <laughs>